Welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of reviews into medieval equipment that's currently for sale. You'll find lots of DIY videos into costuming and furniture. You'll find lots of analysis of medieval events, who were the key people and why did events take place the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you and you might like to consider subscribing. And today what we're going to do is make a pair of medieval style leather greaves or leg guards. I understand leather armour is very contentious amongst certain historians and the medieval reenactment community despite many archaeological finds being out there in history and well documented. Some of these finds date back as much as 3000 years BC and uh, they've been found all over the whole kind of Middle Eastern and Western worlds. Yet uh, there is a lot of contention around not so much whether they existed but how popular they were and who used them and what for. However, uh, I'm not here to debate that in this video today. That one will come up uh, in a month or two's time. I'm uh, very much starting to bring my horse into my medieval reenactment and I really do enjoy uh, getting out there on the horse. However, uh, it's, it's just a, a little bit hard sometimes when you're trying to get through scrub and uh, a lot of these low hanging branches and so on. So I wanted to get a pair of greaves made. Alrighty, so we've now cut these, uh, these greaves out. Now we need to put a bit of detail into them. Uh, for a leather project like this, these are my basic tool kit. From right to left we have a basic hammer. We have a uh, box knife in this case by Stanley. I have a punch for punching holes with. I have a, uh, a fine work sort of scalpel type knife. There's a what's called a stylus which is a uh, I guess a blunt metal pin and that's just used for scribing detail onto leather. I have a leather, leather beveler, I have a needle and some waxed thread. Uh, because it's waxed thread I'll then use a lighter just to seal the ends. Uh, obviously a ruler of some description or a straight edge. Uh, I also have a, um, a tool to mark out uh, edges from the um, side. I also have leather dye and then also a sealer. So if you're going to dye the leather then uh, it's important to seal it and what that does is protect it from UV light and also I guess just rain and stuff like that as well uh, otherwise the, the dye will fade and then I have some sponges to apply both the dye and also the sealer We've now cut these uh, these greaves out. Now we need to put a bit of detail into them. Alrighty, so we've now got our two greaves cut out. They're looking really good. Uh, not too far away from starting to look like a really good authentic um, garment. So let's, uh, let's see if we can bring them to life a bit more. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edges with a tool and that's going just to, uh, to bring a bit of I think everything in this sort of period was decorated. Everything throughout the medieval period right through into the Renaissance period was, was very much a decorated items. Whether that was, you know, um, uh, wooden or fabric or leather or metal. And I think it's interesting uh, that, that so much was decorated because it, it, it kind of created that personalization I suppose it might lack otherwise. Ready, let's, uh, let's see what we're doing. Okay, I've got this, uh, this tool here which is going to give me a nice uh, edge. Just going around nice and slowly. And... I'm now just going to take a second pass at that.
These will be quite a utilitarian kind of item for me. Um, I'm, I guess, not on the horse quite as much as I'd like to be. Um, quite a lot going on in my life, but uh, hopefully, um, we'll see a bit more development in that area over the next few months. I really like to incorporate that as part of the videos. Okay, next we're going to put some water on and do a bit of detailing. It's quite a warm day here, although it is the afternoon now. By applying the leather, uh, by applying the water like this, it helps to make the leather quite supple and although this is being quite a thick piece of leather at about three mil. So what's that? About an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure what the weight is uh, in ounces for my American and Canadian viewers. But there we go. Just as that starts to dry off, I'm going to put across a, a wheel. Now I've got this lovely Celtic weave that I used on my uh, van braces in a recent video. So I'm just incorporating that into this one. Uh, it makes sense as the two items are leather armour. So I'm now going to use what they call a stylus just to, um, to mark onto the leather and the pattern that I'm going to use. Um, I found this really lovely blue colour from a company called Tamiya. So I did a lot of scale modelling when I was a kid. And um, this, this acrylic paint is just perfect for this kind of work. Don't apply it too thick. It's not very expensive by the way. Um, And for my sort of purposes, this is this is just great. For those of you who are new to to leather crafting, and you know, we're all learning in this kind of process. Um, obviously, don't overload your brush. Just keep your expectations relatively reasonable. Um, I think that's what I've had to learn the most. I tend to be someone with fairly high expectations of myself. And we're all learning, as I say. I think it's interesting because you can see quite easily that, uh, you know, there were people at the time in the medieval period who had lots of skill and lots of you know the right tools and so on and then there were other people who just gave it a go and I think that's really what we should all just aspire to we're all learning and I think really that's what I hope to to do with my videos is encourage people to learn and give it a go so whilst that leather is drying, I'm just going to bevel the edges. Um, so I like to bevel the edges of all my projects. It just takes the, it just gives it a, such a nicer finish. And um, this is just a number two beveler. Uh, alrighty, so the blue paint's dried really nicely. Now the next thing we're going to do is just apply some dye. I just use a fairly light. Uh, brown dye for this sort of thing. Um, 
as I say, this is more utilitarian for me as a uh, as opposed to decorative. I know there are plenty of people out there that love the decorative styles, and um, and that's great. And that honestly is is really good. Uh, it's just not really. Uh, as I say, I'm, I'm more utilitarian in my approach um, because I'm using mine um, for a horse riding. As I slowly bring my horse into my medieval reenactment, it's a process um, to actually bring a horse in because they've got to get used to cameras and weapons and sounds and all sorts of things that they're just not used to and they're not really exposed to. Uh, strange clothes and shapes and so on that the horses just don't get exposure to. Alright, so there we go. It's another very warm day here in Brisbane. Uh, and you should be able to see that drying almost instantaneously. Such a warm day. Alrighty, so that's that. As that's drying off, I like to apply a, um, a leather clear sealer. This just protects it all from the uh, the, the weather, the environment, so rain and uh, it'll help protect the um, detailing from scratches and that kind of thing. So we're now basically finished. All that remains to do is get some straps on. Um, so each of these greaves is going to have three straps. And we'll just uh, get that started now. I don't like to use rivets. I don't think rivets are very historically accurate at all. Um, I prefer to stitch everything. I use a very simple stitching method. Basically I sew around one direction once and then I go back up the other way. I'll show you that a bit more clearly in a second. Well, obviously you're making a pair. So just be a bit careful. Uh, and then make sure you don't end up with two left or two right hand ones of these if you're going to follow the uh, tutorial. The stitching technique I use is really simple. I wrap the string around my finger twice and then roll that down. That forms a nice tight little knot. Come up through my piece of leather and down into this one uh, then down into this one Dealing with much thicker leather, um, each of these pieces is 3 mils thick. Um, that's like an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure what the, um, the ounce weight is for my American and Canadian viewers. Um, but what I tend to find is it gets very thick and hard to work with. Um, so it can be useful to use a pair of pliers. Uh, alrighty, so what you can now see is that we've stitched in one direction and we have three sort of open stitches and some gaps. We don't want the gaps, what we want is a, to be a nice straight line. So we're now going to stitch back the other direction. This creates what's called a double saddle stitch and uh, it's incredibly strong, probably too strong really for this application, but it's absolutely perfect and it, um, it does so well. It's really good and really robust, so that's what we're going to use. Well, yeah, now, there we go, now we've got our two rows, two beautiful rows of, of the stitches, looks really good. And we'll just continue that as we work around the other straps. Alrighty guys, all finished, all done. As you can see, these give me really good protection around the knees and ankles, which is really exactly what I'm looking for. Nice bit of detailing, but not too much, nothing over the top. Uh, really good project to do, that's probably 
taking me uh, at least a day. Uh, so it's good as a, as a holiday project or something to do over a bit of time if you're interested. Um, didn't cost that much. Very basic, very simple tools. So if you're interested in giving it a crack yourself, absolutely give it a, give it a go. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of fun with it. You can put in so much personalization and make it truly your own kind of project. Whether you want it to come up to the knees or below, whether you want it to come down to the ankles or not, it's, it's really down to you. I think this is a very authentic piece and I can really see how this would really fit into medieval horsemanship. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to, uh, to giving this a go uh, with my horse and, uh, and, and starting to introduce that in the next couple of weeks. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.